closed. Uh, I've got Councillor Ganan, Councillor Riley. All those in favor? And that carries. Uh, so ahead of you, we have a recommendation. Uh, the recommendation report uh, T23 2021 regarding section 357 applications dated September 20th, 2021 be received and that the list of application as contained in appendix A to report T23-2021 be approved. I'm looking for a mover for that. I got Councillor Ganan seconded by Councillor Bradrick. Um, any comments or questions? All those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, so we'll be moving on. Um, again, I am your chair, Jason Trombetta. Uh, just move to the land acknowledgement statement. Uh, on behalf of the members of council and staff, we wish to acknowledge this land on which the township of West Lincoln operates, the land on which it's gathered by traditional cherry, traditional territory of the Hondasani and Anishibag people and is still home to many Indigenous people today. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work here today and, and follow the Hondasani and system of blending laws and values of the Anishabi beliefs to strive to live in harmony and balance throughout the municipality. Uh, we acknowledge that we are all treaty people and accept our responsibility to honor our relations. Uh, moving on to item number five, uh, is there any change in orders of items on the agenda? Uh, seeing none, any disclosure of interest or pecuniary interest? Seeing none. So we have an appointment this evening, um, item A5521. Uh, this is Kathleen uh, Kelly, board member of the Joint Accessibility Advisory Committee, uh, JJAC. Uh, she has a PowerPoint presentation, and after the PowerPoint uh, presentation, there's a recommendation. So I will turn the... Uh, well, first, welcome, uh, welcome you, Kathleen and uh, Mr. Evans. Welcome to. I think you're together. Is that correct? I think he did state that, Mr. Evans. So, I'd like to welcome you this evening, and I will turn it over to you. Am I able to share screen? Uh, if you have the capability, yes, you are. Yep. Yeah, it's saying that the host has disabled participant screen sharing. Um, okay. And I'm. Uh, we do have our IT person on. Please try again. Perfect. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Yep, we're good. See it. I can see it, Kathleen. Thank you. Okay. 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 Um, so just a little bit of history of the Joint Accessibility Advisory Committee. In 2003, six municipalities came together to create the Joint Accessibility Advisory Committee. And the committee includes the town of Lincoln, the township of West Lincoln, the town of Pelham, the city of Thorold, the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake, and the town of Grimsby. And we have expanded our committee in 2021. Uh, we are now joined by the city of Port Coburn and we welcome Port Coburn and will assist the city to ensure compliance with the AODA. We will work to develop positive relationships within our local community. So some of our um, committee activities. Um, so the, the audits, we do audits of municipal facilities um, training modules for staff to ensure AODA compliance, committee branding, so we do have a new logo, a community flag, as well as a Facebook page. Uh, the committee originally did audits from 2003 to 2006, and we're doing refresher audits at the request of staff to ensure AODA compliance. This year, we're auditing five facilities per municipality. So this also includes parks and trails, as well as buildings. We prepared refresher training in AODA compliance areas and have provided it to the JAC staff contacts. We welcome items for the JAC Facebook page to promote the efforts of the municipality. We also work with the town of Lincoln Age, Lincoln's Age Friendly Committee on a joint events guide. Um, so this is our new logo. This is what we came together and we had flags created as well. 
Um, so we continue to promote our accessibility award. Um, we use an audit checklist in each business and the checklist includes wheelchair access such as ramps and automate, automatic doors, visual access such as large print and braille menus, um, employment, so hiring of people with disabilities and customer service. Um, if the business scores 80% or higher, um, they receive the We Are Accessible Award. And to date, 10 businesses have received the award throughout our catchment areas. 2025, so currently 22% of the Canadian population has a disability. The deadline for full accessibility in the municipality is fast approaching. This means goods and services will need to be accessible, customer service, information, communications, new facilities, as well as services. We will continue to work with staff and council to ensure compliance with the AODA and are now available to answer questions or concerns and to review site plans. Um, our ask is that we ask council to assist us in ensuring the municipality meets the 2025 deadlines. We ask Council to promote our We Are Accessible Award to local businesses. We ask Council to continue to communicate with us about their accessibility concerns and decisions. And we're very grateful and we thank you for the opportunity to present to Council this evening. I'm now going to pass this along to Reese if anybody has any questions regarding the committee or anything that we do. Members of committee, any questions for Ms. Kelly? I have one. Okay, I saw the mayor. Okay, go ahead, Councilor Rayner. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I started as a alderman when we had a different name for ourselves back in 2003. And I remember this starting at that time. Uh, I also remember that there were other five other municipalities involved in it. I thought at that time it was a volunteer uh, situation where you, they were asking the municipalities, um, are you interested in participating in this? And if so, I believe we put something like $10,000 a year towards that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is that not correct, Ms. Kelly? Um, I don't have any of the financial information um, at hand, Mr. Rayner, um, but that's definitely something I can take back um, to the chair. Uh, Reese, do you have any information with regards to the money that was donated? You're on mute, Reese. Okay. I don't have any uh, inf information related to the um, finances. Um, however, what I do know is that we still appoint uh, representatives to, there's, an, there's a process to appoint um, citizens on the committee, but as far as the uh, finances go, I don't have any knowledge to that. All right, thank you. May, maybe through to Ms. Jimmy through uh, the chair. Um, Ms. Shimmy, you were around all those years when that happened. What, was there not a contribution by the township every year towards uh, fulfilling an objective and a goal of, of making uh, the township uh, more accessible? Uh, through you, uh, to count, through, through Councillor Trevetta to Councillor Rayner. Um, yes, we make a contribution, a $10,000 contribution each year thought. towards the Joint uh, Accessibility Committee. Um, that uh, pays for different, um, that pays for the consultant, uh, Donna Harrington's salary, as well as any other uh, costs that may arise with respect to uh, meetings, um, uh, the, the attendance at meetings and, and transportation, um, advertising, so on and so forth. Um. Thank you. So I was I was under the impression that this was a joint venture with five other municipalities for the purpose of being proactive and recognizing and and trying to do what we can in order to make our facilities much more accessible to those who have various degrees of handicap. Um, but is there legislation now that's changed this that has made it mandatory 
that municipalities do this, or is this still on um, the basis of, of um, the municipalities contributing because they want to and they feel there's a need for it? This is to Mr. Um, Reese, so, I can speak to that actually. So there is legislation, it's the AODA. So that's the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. And the mandate is that Ontario is fully accessible by the year of 2025. So when did that, through the chair to Ms. Kelly. So when did that change? Because in 2003, as far as I know, that didn't exist. It was just that the municipalities wanted to because they cared. When did it get to the point where it didn't matter if you cared or not, you were legislated to do it? Um, so that's the part that I'm a little hesitant. When did that happen? 2005. Mm -hmm. Oh, in 2005 it changed? Yes, 2005. Okay. What they did was they, um, they gave you a number of recommendations and each year uh, a couple of them would become Legisl legislation so it wasn't all happening at once so like okay. this year for example all the communication and computer technology stuff is all as of as of january 1st 2021 that was all uh that's not part of the legislation okay i appreciate that thank you very much no problem Thank you, Council Rayner. Uh, I saw the mayor's hand. Mr. Mayor, floor is yours. Yeah, no, I just, uh, I want to thank you for your presentation. There was a little bit of a gap there, so I didn't know if anybody else was going to speak. It was a good question, but uh, generally speaking, I just wanted to thank you for making your presentation to Council this evening, and, um, and I'm glad West Lincoln is um, continuing to be very supportive of this. So thank you very much. Uh, Madam CAO, I saw your hand. Go ahead. Yes, I, thank you, um, Council Trimbetta. I don't usually have comments on this, but I wanted to let you know that I worked in two other municipalities where we had um, a specific responsibility and our own um, accessibility committees. And I think that this model is wonderful. And I think it's really great that we can share resources and ensure consistency across those municipalities. So thank you for the work you do in that area. Thank you, Madam CEO. I saw Councillor Bradrick. I think Councillor Ganan, you had your hand up as well. Did you? Please. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Bradrick. I I believe the CAO uh, may have given me some a little bit more clarity on kind of you know the um, what I assume to be two parts to this. Um, one, our own municipal um, responsibility, and that this is a uh, joint venture to help support accessibility and the. Um, the policy changes, et cetera, that may need to go along with that. And um, and to, through you, Chair, to the CAO, uh, just a question about um, the reporting uh, responsibilities for our municipality. Is that done on an annual basis to the province of Ontario? Um, and is this um, committee used to support some of that reporting? So I think I think you've stumped me um, <laughs> with that question, but I do believe the committee um, does a presentate or does forwards the information for all of us. They keep us up to date on in terms of our requirements, and I think tonight we're being warned that there the expectation is to finish the work by 2025. And um, and the, uh, the hardest um, the, one of the biggest challenges was the communications, which was came into effect last year. And that was probably one of the biggest worries. And that's why our website had to be done a certain way and, and the writing is done a certain way. And we make sure that everything can be read by the electronic um, facilities that people can use. So um, I, again, I think I think you're gonna make me do a little bit of homework following this. <laughs> so I, get back. I, I apologize for that. Um, I didn't mean to stump you. No, no perhaps it's my um, lack of knowledge on the subject that may have made my questions not correct. But I just incidentally for my own uh, industry filled up filled out my organization's accessibility report, um, compliance report to the ministry just today. And as I was doing that fillable form, 
They kept asking me if I was in municipality or not. And so therefore, one, I assumed that you also had that same reporting responsibility and perhaps that uh, was not correct. Thank you, Councillor Broderick. Um, anything else, Councillor Broderick, or can I? No, nope, that's it. Thank yeah. you very much, Chair. Perfect. Thank you, Councillor Broderick. Councillor Ganan. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that the JAAC has been part of some of the things going on in West Lincoln lately. Um, prior to COVID, especially the Age Friendly Advisory Committee had um, them as part of our presentation to the seniors um, at our forum, and we had them lined up to again be part of the 2020 forum that did not happen. Karen Lemieux is the person that we most deal with, and we really appreciate when we're looking at planning things for seniors in particular that we have that um, advice and, and uh, expertise, I would say, rather than advice even from Karen in terms of what we need to be looking at when we're ready to offer something to the public. So um, thank you to the members of the committee that are here. I was kind of hoping that Karen might be part of that just because she has been very involved in, in West Lincoln. But I certainly, Kathleen and Reese, appreciate that you're here and thank you for your presentation. Great, thank you, Council Gannon. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Evans and uh, Ms. Kelly for your presentation. Um, there is a recommendation, members of committee, um, and I'll read out that recommendation, is that the PowerPoint presentation from the Joint Accessibility Advisory Committee as presented at the September 20th, 2021 Administration Fire Finance Committee uh, be received for information and that the Township of West Lincoln acknowledges their commitment to the JJAC by ensuring the municipality meets the AODA 2025 compliance requirements and that we are accessible award to be awarded to a local business and communicate with the JJAC with respect to any accessibility concerns or decisions. So I'm looking for a mover for that. Councilor Rayner, a seconder, Councilor Ganan. Any comments or questions, members of the committee on that motion? All those in favor? And that carries unanimously. Um, I'd like to thank you, um, Mrs. Kelly and Mr. Evans, again, for your presentation this evening, uh, and we'll be moving forward with our agenda. Thank you. Um, you. Moving on to number eight. Sorry, members of uh, committee, I forgot to mention that Councillor Yonker uh, would be attending us later on this evening. He is in the mid, probably a little bit busy tonight. He's in the mid of, uh, obviously, uh, and there's an election tonight, so... Not sure if he's attending, but I uh, just want to let, uh, I didn't know, note that at the beginning. So Councillor Yonker will be attending later on this evening. Uh, number eight, any requests to, to address any items on the agenda, members? Seeing none. Um, and sorry, uh, Roberta, is anybody to request any items on the agenda? Seeing none, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, consent agenda items, uh, moving on, item a 5621 the recommendation that uh, administration fire and finance committee hereby approves the following consent agenda items item number one and two are hereby received for information and that item three uh, be hereby received uh, and recommendations contained there on be adopted with the exception of items information report uh, wf wlfd 1421 monthly update august 21 information report uh, number t22 uh, 2021 August 34th, 2021, financial update, recommendation report, CAO 02, 2021, Christmas break, holiday hours. Uh, I need a mover or if any for that. Councilor Riley, seconded by Councilor Ganan. All those in favor? And that carries. Um, Moving on to communications, uh, the Association of Municipalities in Ontario, reconciliation of the new resource materials, the recommendation that the correspondence received from the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, received August 23rd, 2021, be received. And whereas the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released its final report on June 2nd, 2015, which included 94 calls to action to redress the legacy of the residential schools and advance to the process of the Canadian reconciliation. Whereas the recent discoveries of the remains of the unmarked graves across Canada had led to the increased calls for all levels of government to address the recommendations in the TRC's calls to action. And whereas all Canadians and all orders of the government have a role to play in reconciliation. 
And whereas recommendation number 80 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission called upon the federal government in collaboration with the Aboriginal people to establish a statutory holiday of a national of truth and reconciliation to ensure the public commemoration of the history of the legacy of the residential schools remains a vital component of the reconciliation process. And whereas the federal government has announced September 30th, 2021, the first national day of truth and reconciliation, national orange shirt day and a statutory holiday, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Township of West Lincoln does hereby commit to recognizing September 30th, 2021 as a National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, National Orange Shirt Day, by sharing the stories of the residential schools, uh, their school survivors, their families and communities. Um, I need a mover for that, Council Riley, seconded by Council Bradrick. Any comments or questions? Council Riley, and then I have Council Rayner. I just wanted to ask for a recorded vote, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. Uh, Council Rayner. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chair, what is meant by sharing the stories of residential school survivors of families and communities? Uh, this motion here, I will see if maybe I can turn that to Madam CAO, if she can comment on that. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Councillor Chair Trombetta, um, through to Councillor Rayner. So um, the, yet this year, the federal government, as this resolution discusses, did, um, did make the September 30th, the Truth and Reconciliation Day. And the intent is that um, by making the day commemorative to um, the, the, the First Nations and sharing the, the, and the residential school survivors, their families, their communities, they're hoping that through this process, um, there'll be more thought and more time and more moments of, of thought given to these different stories. And um, one thing I'm gonna be doing this week is I'm going to be sharing with um, council and staff an opportunity to listen to some of the stories that have come from two residential school um, attendees. And they are gonna be sharing their stories with the program at, with the library. And then as time moves on, we're going to get more resources in that regard and share that information. Um, some municipalities have taken this and made it a, 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 an official statutory holiday. Um, we are not here, um, and um, but we will be asking people to wear orange shirts on that day and to um, have regard for um, the, this issue that has been brought to the national, national attention. And it's, it's a new program is developing. I sit on um, the diversity and inclusion committee and tomorrow morning, we're gonna be talking about other ways that we can be sharing the, that those education resources with different communities. Thank you, Madam CAO. Councilor Rayner, any other further questions or follow up? Um, I'm... I'm I'm a little, I guess the word is perplexed um, by this. Um, I understand the need, but I don't understand. The government doesn't seem, and I'm referring to the federal government because this was all throughout most of the provinces that there were, there were problems. And it also related again to the Catholic church. Um, nothing seems to me, and I watch the news every day, to be done about it. It's almost like, wow, it was terrible when they found out about it. Now, three weeks later, nobody talks about it anymore. Um, like, there hasn't been any investigations that I'm aware of. I mean, certainly some of these caretakers of these institutions are still alive and can be charged. I mean, they charged a 97-year-old a man who was a guard at a Nazi camp in the Second World War just recently. Uh, uh, nobody seems to be charged yet. I, I don't know if the federal government is really taking this seriously or not. Like, like where is all, all the, the, the information that's available on all this stuff so that they could be pursuing the people who are still alive. And I'm sure there were people in charge still alive. Uh, nothing said about the church again. And the Catholic church seems to get in a lot of trouble. If they're not following children, they're now killing them. Uh, and yet it's supposed to be a religion. There, there's a whole bunch of this that's really bad really confusing and it seems to be on the back burner and it, and it, and i appreciate the fact that they want to bring it out right now but this seems to be a minor issue compared to a huge issue that so far we're not hearing much news about anything being done 
Trudeau wanted to have an apology from the Pope. I don't think he got that. Um, and I, an apology is a pretty weak way of getting out from killing a whole bunch of children. Just say, I'm sorry. In Canada, you yeah. usually go to jail. Um, I, I'm, I'm lost on this. I, well, this is Councilor a very Rainer, serious issue. Maybe I, maybe I can add in here, Councilor Rand. This is just more or less right now. We're sort of recognizing the day that is on the 30th. That is, uh, and I'm not saying that you don't have valid points, Councilor Rayner, but right now the, the uh, recommendation is about the day that we're, we're establishing that we're, uh, we're obviously uh, noticing and, and taking part in on, on a national day of truth, which is gonna be on the 30th. So the government is, has, has made that a specific day and how the obviously township now is, obviously we're endorsing this as in a township and we are committed to having a orange shirt day. So that's what the motion is. I'm not saying you it, don't have any just, valid points. I appreciate what you're saying, Mr. Chair. And I understand you gotta start somewhere, but this is the federal government that announced this date. So the federal government has announced this date, but what's the federal government done to investigate the magnitude of these crimes? Like that's, all of a sudden we just make a day. Yeah, so in other words, if well, we've got a mass killer that shoots 50 people in Canada, we're going to have a special day for this guy. And then we're going to try him later. Like this just seems like a very passe sort of thing. We'll quiet them down by giving them a day. When in reality, this is a huge, serious situation that doesn't require a day, but requires a major investigation. And there should be a heck of a lot of people charged right now. And there's not a thing said about it. Yeah, like, which, again, Councilor Rayner, again, there's a federal election tonight, which we're all aware about. Maybe there'll be some changes and maybe some, some more answers to come once the election is completed tonight. Those are just my thoughts. I, I think this is very passe considering the magnitude of the crime. The very, Thank you. The very valid points, Councilor Rayner. Thank you. Very much. Any other members of committee with comments or questions? Uh, see, well, I have I have a few now. Uh, sorry, maybe just one. I know that it is not actual day off. Actually, it's not a, a, a it's a, a federal day off. Is that correct, Madam CAO? I know there's some possible. Uh, I know because this did, did get asked that if it's uh, there's some possible unions that don't have it in their agreements to have the day off. Uh, and it's obviously, you know, it's going to be negotiated in contracts to come, I guess, that are coming to expire. So I just know it's just a day of staff to, to just recognize and all staff. Uh, I think uh, I did see an email come through that, that, you know, encouraging all staff to wear orange, which I think it's very good. And uh, it's a good thing to support. So I'd like to thank you. So. Seeing that, um, uh, I guess I will call the vote. All those in favor, oh, Mr. Of, Mr. Chair, I call the recorded vote for this. That's right. Sorry, just uh, sorry. Thank you for reminding me, there, Councilor Riley. Um, I'll turn to uh, uh, Clerk Shime, if you can. Thank you, Councilor Trimbetta. I'll take a recorded vote. Councilor Riley, support. Councilor Bradrick, support. Councillor Ganan? Support. Councillor Rayner? Support. Councillor Trimbetta? Support. Mayor Balsma? In favor. Thank you. Six uh, carried. Unanimous. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, moving on, uh, item A58. Dash 21, Brian Walker, Peninsula West Power Inc. Read appointment of two board members commencing January 1st, 2022. Uh, maximum of three year term, December 31st, 2024. The recommendation that blank and blank be recommended for appointment as board members on the Peninsula West Power Inc. board commencing January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, blank. I need a mover for this motion. And then some recommendations to be, and some name nominations to be put in. So I'm turning to members of committee. Uh, I see Councillor Rayner's hand up there, and then Councillor Ganan. Do you have some recommendations for the board? No, that was moved and seconded. Oh, sorry, I need a mover. Well, I think I'll have to. Well, move and second it, and then I'll turn to, to for discussion. So, moved by Councillor Rayner, seconded by Councillor Ganan. Uh, any comments or questions? Sorry, there. Thank you for catching that, Councillor Rayner. Councillor Rayner. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, now, recently we appointed um, Councillor Ganan, I believe, 
Um, and this is Brian Walker now dealing with Brian Walker's areas compared to the confusion that happened a few months ago. Peninsula West Powers, Mr. Walker. Um, but anyways, and I would also, if if that would be acceptable, Councilor Trombetta is now sitting on it. If Councilor Trombetta wishes to continue, um, I would support uh, allowing Councilor Trombetta to, to continue on if that's acceptable with other members of committee or it's open for discussion. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Councilor Rayner. There's two names, myself, and if I'm hearing Councilor Ganan, uh, I'll turn to say Councilor Riley, your hand up. And then, or sorry, Councilor Ganan, your hand was up first, sorry. I just wanted to say that this appointment was actually made last spring for the completion of this term, but tomorrow was actually the very first meeting uh, that, that I have had to attend. I don't know about Councilor Trombetta. So um, I, I don't know how the committee feels, but I would certainly like to stay in that position for longer than a meeting or two. So, um, yes. yeah. Yep. Councilor, thank you, Councilor Gannon. Yes, we do have one meeting tomorrow night. Um, so, yes. Uh, Councilor Riley? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I was going to bring forward, um, I guess we got a nomination for yourself there, which I have no problem with. I support that. Um, I'd also like to bring forward then that nomination for Councilor Ganan to um, be placed in that second spot there. Okay. Uh, anybody else comments or questions? We just uh, need that. And then also they're asking for uh, the term. I need council to decide on the term. It does. There's no end date there. They're usually three year terms, but go ahead, Council Rayner. Thank you. It does say maximum three years to December 31st, 2024. Um, I, I don't have any problem with, if you're in it, I've done it twice. Um, you enjoy, at least I enjoyed it. Uh, there was a lot of information in there and there was a lot of participation. So once you get into it, it's kind of, you know, just get in for a year or two and then kind of go out as, you're, you put a lot of time and effort into it. And, and I think you would like to continue with that until at least the end of the term. So I would be prepared to put 2024 down unless somebody has an objection to that. Councilor Riley. Uh, I have no problem supporting that. Um, I did feel that, you know, as Councilor Rayner and myself sit on the MPI board, I, I think it's important to also point out that some of the, uh, um, things that are addressed through our strategic plan is board turnover and having a couple of counselors in there that have only been there for, you know, not even one year really. And, and yourself there definitely would put that board at a disadvantage during the current pandemic. And then we know board turnover is a tough one for continuity and consistency and insurance of um, ensuring that the, the board functions at its high, you know, um, capacity. So I think that's a probably a reasonable request. So I would certainly support the, whatever the three years is, I guess it's to the December 31st, 2024 as well. Okay. We have that. Um, did Councillor uh, Mayor Balsma, go ahead. Well, I, I, I'm really kind of at a, at a loss here because um, I hear what you're saying and, and normally I would kind of abide by that, but you know, uh, it is a political appointment and um, I think I'd be remiss in, in you know, uh, saying that that wasn't important um, six months ago or three months ago when, when I was removed uh, because we had a difference of opinion, had nothing to do with uh, NPEI uh, or, or my performance on that committee, but it was uh, about a disagreement out in the community. And, um, and yet the, 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 nobody's even looking, look at that. Um, and, and, uh, Pardon me, Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, I, what do you mean? No one's looking. We're all here on camera. I didn't get that well, statement. I, I, I think that, you know, these words, That's these words ring hollow. These words ring hollow on, on this. So I just wanted to just say, as far as I'm concerned, I don't I don't think you guys are, are, are serious about saying that um, it's very important to have continuity there when when, you know, uh, I've been removed from committees that had nothing to do with my political stance. But um, uh, these are political appointments, and, and that that precedent of just removing somebody that you disagree with, or that the community disagrees with, or that there's any kind of um, uh, disagreement with a stand that anybody makes, that they're just removed from uh, committees willy-nilly, including the Heritage and NPI. That those that really hurt that evening, and and even my my sincere apology was just overlooked, and and you proceeded to just make this. Uh, um, these political appointments. And so I just want to get that on the record. You may disagree with me, whatever. Um, I, I certainly disagree with all of you uh, saying that 
that this is um, uh, uh, it's very important to have continuity there. Anyway, well, that's, Mayor, it. Thank that's you. all I have to say, Mr. Chair. Yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do recall you that, and I do recall there's also a six nothing vote, and Councillor Yonker was not there. Councillor Councillor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And yeah, I was actually just going to bring that exact point up. And if anything, I'm a little flabbergasted by the mayor's comments because he was, you know, as his own words, was at the mercy of council. And he fully supported what council's decision was given the circumstance that the mayor himself created. And so at that time, we also had another representative who was on that board. And, you know, and so our understanding at that time is that the continuity aspect would still be there. Here we are talking about potentially removing two people at that if we were not to support this tonight. So as much as I hear what the mayor is saying, and he's certainly right in saying that we're going to have a disagreement here, I also find it very um, interesting that now he's going to use this opportunity to speak in opposition of it when he was fully in support of it before. And so my only guess is now he's just playing games, and I don't appreciate that because I think the community deserves better from their mayor. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Uh, that being said, uh, I didn't... Uh, the only thing I didn't appreciate that this this committee and members of staff are paying attention at all times, Mr. Mayor, looking away. I don't know if you need us to come to your house to be having this meeting, but I didn't appreciate that statement. Uh, if anybody has their face consistently turned or looking at his phone on a daily time, it's always you, Mr. Mayor. So moving on, we have those uh, we have those uh, recommendations there. Madam Clerk, did you get those? Yes, I did. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's uh, could, till December 31st, 2024, correct? Could you could you please read out the names and, and the recommendation and then we'll all vote on it, please, Madam Clerk? Yes, thank you, Councillor Trimbetta. That Councillor Jason Trimbetta and Councillor Cheryl Ganan be recommended for appointment as board members on the Peninsula West Power Inc. Board commencing January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2024. It was moved by Councillor Rayner Seconded by Councillor Ganan. Thank you. Councillor Rayner, and something else? Yes, recorded vote, please, Mr. Thank Mr. you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I just my screen just keeps bumping. Okay, Councillor Rayner. Support. Councillor Braderick. Support. Councillor Ganan. Support. Councillor Riley. <clears throat> Support. Mayor Balsma. Opposed. Um, Councillor Trombetta. Support. And I believe Councillor Jonker is now um, in the meeting. Councillor Jonker. Yep. I don't know if you heard the discussion. I'm, I'm going to refrain from voting because I just got in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Yonker. Welcome tonight, Councillor Yonker. Big night, but welcome tonight. Okay. The uh, the vote is five yeah, to did one. Did you hear that? I'm not going to vote. I just got in and I'm not sure what. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, I, That's fine. I understand. Thank you, Councillor um, Yonker. The vote is six to one. It's carried. Sorry, five to one, it's carried. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. We're on staff reports, there are none. Other business, Madam CAO, flags at half mass until September 30th, 2021, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. The recommendation that the flags throughout the township of West Lincoln remain at half mass up until after September 30th, 2021. Uh, any comments you wanna make on that, Madam CAO? Yeah, thank you. I do. Um, I wanted to clarify. So um, when in June, when when um, the flags were lowered um, in response to the um, the unmarked graves or the, the bodies that were found in, um, in the Western schools, um, there was a decision made by the federal government to lower the flags and everybody followed suit. And our flags are still down. And so when we do a flag raising, like we did last week, the United Way flag, um, we raise that flag and then we lower it again. And um, across the region, we've been talking a little bit about you know, when, when the flags are gonna go back up again. And the federal government is, has taken the position that they are gonna keep flying their flags at half mast um, 
and they are continuing to do that until there's an agreement between the, the different parties about what action is going to be taken. Now, some of our colleague, uh, other local area municipalities in the region have already raised their flags. And so um, I was trying to take some action on this item and felt that perhaps until after the September 30th date, when we um, when there is the the um, attention on the natural, um, the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation that we would raise in the next day. And I have been doing some research here about the, the what the federal government doing is, and they're still, still keeping them down. And it's been, hasn't been really straightforward for us because we know that we've had, we just have a new flag policy. We know we're supposed to follow the federal government in terms of, of raising and lowering the flags. And so if you were to turn down this recommendation, um, I'd be okay with that. Um, or if, if this council's wishes to raise them after the September 30th, I'm also, I could um, live with that. I just wanted to provide some context before you made the decision. Thank you, Madam CAO. I got Council Rainer first, then Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, so I think it Madam still needs to be moved. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, you're correct. Sorry about that. Uh, looking for a mover for that. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Councillor Ganan, obviously comments or questions. Uh, I have Councillor Rayner. Do you still have a question afterwards, Mr. Mayor, or is that just moving? Okay, then Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Councillor Rayner. Floor is yours. Oh, all right. Thank you. Uh, through to the CAO. So this is written intentionally like you've got it here because the first one says until September 30th, the recommendation says until after September 30th. The, um, the intent was to, until after September the 30th. But as I said, I, this was just, I wanted to bring this to council's attention for your direction. If you want to keep them down and be consistent with the federal government, so be it. Or we, you can take this action. But I, do, I don't want to go against the flag policy that council has recently approved. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councilor Rainer. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Madam CEO. I, I think that there's a lot of wisdom in this, and, and um, I, I think there's there's um, a logic to to this as well. And, and I know that these these things can be uh, very sensitive, and, and I think that this is a like a, a starting point, as you noted, and I've noted. Um, there's there's quite a mixed bag um, across municipalities, and I've done a little research and and asked, and and there is a bit of a mixed bag. I think that this is appropriate. And as uh, Councillor Rayner did note before, this is uh, largely federal government um, kind of responsibility in terms of the reconciliation part, and 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 the um, and if they choose to do that, I think that that's um, uh, you know, appropriate for them. Uh, but as a municipality, I I, um, I I think that this is a um, a very logical a logical step. So I just wanted to say that I'm in favor of this. Thanks. Thank you for those comments, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, when I read this, I certainly have uh, no issue with this by any means. Um, I guess my only um, question, or maybe just putting you know my thoughts out there, is we are we're only what ten days away or so, and so it kind of might look like it'd be pointless to pull it, you know, to put them back up just to bring them back down. Um, but I just think when we have uh, flags at half staff there for large amounts of time, I kind of wonder if that almost um, deflates the cause in any capacity or the reasoning. And so I think, you know, thinking maybe in the future and in other scenarios that may come down, we might want to keep that in mind because I'd, I'd hate to normalize that in any capacity. Like the reason we lower our flags is, you know, pay our respects and, and, and bring awareness to, you know, to important topics and issues. And so, you know, that would be my, you know, only real comment here is trying to, you know, be maybe a little bit more aware of it in the future should we be in a situation similar again but i think the recommendation here is you know more than appropriate and you know and then we can you know still take part in the september 30th component as well i just thought i'd make that noted for the record so thank you council riley any other uh questions or comments from members of committee so we had a mover and seconder for that all those in favor and that's carried. Uh, moving on, item A, 60 members of committee, verbal updates, members of boards or committees if required, any members of committee? Seeing none, 
Members of council, any other business items of informative nature? Uh, Council Riley? I did just want to mention one thing. I, I didn't get a chance to mention it earlier um, when we were talking about when we had the consent items. I did want to um, bring up that uh, under the, the uh, what's it called? I should know it right off the top of my tongue here. Uh, the monthly update we get from the fire department, I thought it was worth noting that they did a soft opening for the online permit. And, uh, and so today I managed to, I went online and, and did the process myself. And it's, I don't think there's been a more convenient process. So I just wanted to thank staff for getting that open. And I guess it's official launch is tentatively the uh, September 24th. But uh, I am kind of curious if I can to you, Mr. Mayor, to our, our Mr. Chair, to our uh, uh, fire chief, I just kind of get some of his feedback on how he's felt the soft opening has gone so far. If there's, you know, anything that uh, just love to hear some input on how the website's been received or the online permitting has been received. Through you, uh, Mr. Chair, to Council Riley. Yeah, we did. Uh, we did a soft opening um, just to make sure that, uh, you know, everything that was supposed to work worked. Uh, Having said that, it's been fantastic. Uh, it's working well. Uh, people are extremely receptive that they don't have to call in uh, a million times a year. So uh, uh, for that, um, it, its effectiveness is working very, very well. So yeah, we are uh, we are in uh, working with Beth in communications to roll out. Uh, some media stuff uh, on Thursday <laughs> to make it uh, uh, official, um, but overall it's going well. Awesome, that's great to hear. And yeah, like from my brief experience, it must have taken me less than two minutes to go through that whole process. I thought it was pretty straightforward and easy to use. So you know, I appreciate you guys getting that off the ground and appreciate hearing that input. So that's all I have to say, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Councilor Riley. Uh, Councilor Yonker? Yeah, I just, um, I'm not sure where to bring this up and under what committee, but I do want to bring up the, uh, the, the policy that was just put in place um, for uh, vaccinations. Um, I've been getting a lot of calls from residents, a lot of concerns that um, we are, um, they have a policy in place that is um, against what they, they, they want to do when it comes to being able to use the arena, to use uh, the facilities. And yeah. I also have gotten some calls from employees that have expressed con concerns. And I, I'm concerned myself. We uh, had a strategic um, um, not to, planning. Not to we stop. did a lot of strategic things. That in, in, that, in there, we, um, we, are, we, we said we're gonna be a township that's, in, that's inclusive and we are now have a policy that's going to go into in place that is going to uh, not allow our residents to use things. So I, I got a lot of concerns with that policy, and and we need to um, really reconsider it. And so, Councilor Yonker, so, you're, yeah. you're absolutely you have you, your concerns are valid, but that's usually this item, and I've been told before this is an item that we bring up. Uh, you know, it, events in the community. I'd recommend you call the clerk and maybe put it on the agenda for discussion. I think this council would love to probably add to the discussion with it. Um, I've been told by even the mayor in the private, we talk about a road or something like that under this subject. It's really not the time. And I know I see the mayor shaking his head. So, I mean, he's agreeing with me. This is really not the, the, the point on the agenda to, to bring those things up. So I would recommend maybe you can call the clerk and see if you can get it on even council's agenda, do what you feel is best. But Usually this item under other business is something that's in the community that that it's uh, we're going to rave that you have attended or something like that. It's just from past practice, Ms. Councilor Yonker, not. Uh... Go ahead. No, that's other... Are we under new business or other business? We are under still under a 61 dash 21 for new sorry. business. You'll need a move in a, you'll need a mover in a second yeah. to head into. That. OK, sorry, okay. I'm, I'm jumping. No, no, I just listen. The only reason yeah. I, I've learned in the past two, that's yeah. the item not to do it and you know, there's been people that, you know, I'd like to talk about a road that had a pothole and I put it under this and back in my previous term, I got in trouble. So anyways, uh, I have some news. Uh, if sorry, if anybody else, I attended the grand opening of the farmer's market with members of council. I know it was long, I know it seemed long ago, but that was August 27th. Uh, it was a, it was a great event. I'd like to say to members of this committee that attended that also 
supported uh, my daughter's bake stand. I want to reach out and say thank you to all of you. Uh, your support was very, very welcoming. Um, there was a good turnout. I think myself, uh, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Ganan and Councillor Riley, also with uh, our local MPP, Mr. Oosterhoff, were there to uh, open. Uh, there were some, some uh, great vendors. Uh, there was a nice article in the, uh, that was written in the paper about it. So it, it, it looked like it was a big buzz. Uh, still some tweaks that got to be worked out, but I know Michelle is working at it. And, uh, you know, I, I just think that uh, it's a great event. And, uh, you know, I, I had to... Uh, I had people come that some uh, relatives of mine that came from Hamilton and that supported and they were just uh, really, uh, really happy with the process and how local it was. And, and, you know, I saw the money that they were spending and it was really incredible seeing that support to the local business owners. So I just wanted to say thank you to members of staff. We did, I know members of this committee, that was one thing when we were interviewed, a lot of us did, uh, did uh, thank the organization and everybody, all the work that went into this. Uh, so I'd like to just thank also, so my thing here is I'd like to thank members of council that the support they gave to the stands, uh, it's much appreciated. So I just wanted to put that on record. So thank you. Uh, moving forward. Uh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Councillor Yonker. Yeah, okay, I thought it was muted again. Sorry, I just um, would also like to mention that uh, the West Lincoln Chamber of Commerce is, uh, we had a meeting last I can't remember what the date was, but we um, discussed the, uh, the, the awards evening that's coming up and we've been blessed with a lot of good businesses in our community and we have, uh, everybody has, every um, category has somebody or two or three uh, businesses that have been nominated, that process they're, uh, they're, they're looking through all the, the, the nominations and, and they will be working on uh, picking each a business for each category so that's going forward and, and kind of exciting and uh, that it, that you know we're still able to do something like this and hopefully uh, we can do it live but I, I think it'll be probably a virtual thing and um, so yeah I just thought I'd update you there that the West Lincoln Chamber of Commerce is still meeting we're still um, trying to do business and looking forward to uh, finding out uh, which businesses um, that the, the businesses that have been nominated, which ones pick, get picked and, and that's going to be made public. Um, I, I, I've been rushed all day, so I didn't write the date down of when that is. I don't know October if Cheryl can help. October They're, 21st. October 21st. Thank you very and much. It is, so, it is for sure a virtual event. So Yeah. Okay. So yeah, looking forward to that happening. And, you know, in these tough times, right, it was kind of like, wow, this is going to be kind of tough to get organized, but uh, hats off to the board of the, the chamber there to get it all done and the director and, and yeah, looking forward to, to that event. So thanks. Thank you, Councillor Yonker. Okay. Is there anybody else with members of, of council? Any other new business items? Nothing. Moving on, new business. Councilor Yonker, you said you had something you wanted to bring under new business. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I do want to um, express some concerns and, and see what... Um, a, a second or two. Oh, yeah, the, the new policy on vaccinations, I'd like to have that discussed. So I'd like to move that, that we discuss that. You need, you need a mover? Okay. Seconder? Anybody, committee, would like to... Yeah, but that's you're the mover. So you know, seconder, Count Mayor Mayor Boss, you're moving it. Seconded by by uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, go ahead, uh, Council Yonker. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry, am I mistaken? Yeah, no, we have to vote on a new oh, item. Sorry, vote. my mistake. Sorry, sorry. about that. Uh, my that's my fault, Madam Clerk. That's good. Uh, so obviously, Council Yonker has a new business about the vaccine policy. We have a mover. He moves it. Seconded by. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, support uh, all those in favor of him bringing a new item of business forward. And that does not carry. So, Councillor Yonker does not carry tonight. So, I would suggest you maybe further you could bring something on the agenda. There's you can there's other ways, but unfortunately, it did not carry this evening. So yeah, that is unfortunate. Unfortunate. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, as your chair, I'll declare the meeting over at, uh, 735. See you at Public Works.
It's here. <laughs> and here we go. Passing it over to I, I did to yeah. to Count Sar. I'm so used to switching over. So that's your right, Mr. Mayor. Um, <laughs> we got to switch over. There you are. Okay, let me switch over too. I was trying to uh, sign up on a new laptop and I'm having some technical difficulty. So I'm gonna be doing it over the phone. The difficulty with the phone, I will not be able to see anybody but the speaker. Um, so I'm not sure how we can do this as chair because I won't be able to see if anybody puts their hand up or not. So I'm wondering if we could just do it as I will move it and and, and or move it and second it, does that work? Um, I don't know if I need to ask Roberta that. And I just need to switch to my agenda. Joanne, I think is a question. Pardon me, Joanne. Yeah, is that who what I need to ask? Mean, what is the request? Yeah, well, I, you, you want to move and second every item? No, he wants to, he wants to appoint somebody to move and second. For what? Oh, um, well, because, because I can't device. see everybody. That's okay, how we yeah, do it. I, I tried to go. Just as a suggestion, why maybe um, your vice runs it then, counselor? Yeah, that's okay with me too. Because I basically, I, what it is is technical difficulties. I was going to sign up on my new laptop and uh, yeah, I got busy. I didn't get in here on time to get this set, set up and. I, so I, I just signed up on my phone quickly and, and I can't see everybody except so for the speaker, chair. right? So right now I can see. So if, so the, if the vice chair is good to chair, I'm okay with that. I think that makes sense, but. That's what I was gonna ask. So is Councilor Rayner still here? I don't, he's muted. I think that would just be the easiest solution if he could just step into the chair. Or can we not just say, I will move that or I will second that counselor, Sure. right? If we speak it out, then, then I can, we can carry it that way, but. I'm good with that. Joanne, are you okay with that? Yeah, as long as it, it, somebody speaks it out, I'm, I'm good with that, yes. Um, I, don't, I, I don't agree that it should be appointed, sorry. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so we're good to go that way. So please um, just bear that in mind if you're moving something and seconding that you uh, state your name and then I can we can move forward with things. Um, I am your uh, chair tonight, Councillor uh, Jonker. And on behalf of the members of council and staff, we wish to acknowledge this land on which the Township of West Lincoln operates. The land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and, and Anishinaabe, sorry, Anishinaabe peoples and is still home to many indigenous people today. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work here today and to follow the Haudenosaunee system of blending laws and values and the Ana, uh, sorry, Anish, uh, Nabi beliefs to strive to live in harmony and balance throughout the municipality. We acknowledge that we are all treaty people and accept our responsibility to honor all our relations. Is there any changes in order of items on the, on the agenda? I see none or I hear none. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest and or conflict of interest, please speak out if you have any. I hear none. I see no appointments. And there is there any items that, is there any members of public in attendance or as we received any emails, uh, Madam Clerk, no, addressing any of the items on the agenda? No, Councillor Jonker, we, we did not receive any emails nor I see any from the, any from the public in attendance. 
Okay, thank you very much. We'll move on to consent agenda items. And we have one, it's item PW31-21. And that the Public Works Recreation Arena Committee hereby approve the following consent items. And items one, two, and three B and are hereby received for information with the exemptions of items. And can I get a mover for that? So moved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Second. Seconded by? William. Thank you, uh, Councillor Riley. And nothing's um, moved. Moved. Can we? Uh, I guess we're going to have to vote A or nay, or can somebody tell me what the number is? I guess okay. we didn't think of that. So, all those in favor? Support. Madam Clerk? Support. It's all Support. supported. It's you know, whenever you call any oppose or not in favor, I think that will stand out to you more than anything. Yeah. Yes. Good. Good point. So, if anybody wants to uh, oppose something, then uh, please state. And, and other than that, we'll we'll count it as carried. Okay. So, everybody was in support of those three items. Thank you. We have communication. We have one item. And uh, where are we here? There we go. Oh, come on. My technology is not keeping up to us here. There it goes. It is um, item PW32-21. Uh, Bev Packman, West Lincoln Christmas Parade Committee uh, regarding uh, re resignation. One, that the email received on September 7th, 2021 from Bev Pack Packham advising a resignation from the West Lincoln Christmas Parade Committee be received with regrets and that by law 2020-95 be repealed and that a new bylaw be presented at the September 27th, 2021 council meeting to remove Bev Packham from the Schedule G, which is the West Lincoln Christmas Parade Committee of bylaw 2018-114. Can I have a mover for that? I'll move, Cheryl. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ganan. Moves that, seconded by? Shelly Bradrick. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bradrick. All those in favor, are any in opposed? Hearing none that I consider, we can consider this moved. Thank you. And we have staff reports. We have uh, number in, so item nine, we have staff reports. We have 9.1, we'll move to that. Oh, it is, eScribe is moving slow today for me. I don't know why it's not clicking onto it. Staff reports. Oh, there we go. So item PW33-21, Manager of Operations, Steve McGinney and Director of Public Works and Recreation, Mike DiPaolo, Recommendation Report PW-18-2021, uh, 2021 Hot Mix Spot Repair Authorization. And the motion is that report PW18-2021 regarding 2021 hot mix spot repair tender authorization dated September 20th, 21 be received and two, that council accept the tender submission by Griffin construction for the paving of spot repairs in, uh, in the amount of $134,552.50 plus HST and three, that council approve the budget the project budget in the total amount of one hundred and sixty seven thousand five hundred and twenty five hundred and twenty dollars and fifty cents and that a bylaw be passed to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into an agreement with Griffin Construction. Can I get a mover for that, please? Bilsma, so moved. Seconded by Trombetta. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Councillor Trombetta. So moved. Uh, perfect. Right up there, uh, 
Uh, any of Hearing none, but a little bit of background noise, we'll accept that as moved. Thank so, you. Councillor, hold on, Mr. Chair, just yep. for, for the process here, I would say maybe if you could start after each one, just ask if there's any questions and then ask the question. Um, I think that might save any confusion. Yep. Just if you go right into the vote, then it might just take out any potential questions anyone has. Yeah, especially because I can't see anybody waving their hands at me. A good point there. Yeah, so I'm sorry, so, I just asked yep. that extra step. Nope. Good. Yep. Beautiful. I'll try to remember that the next one. Remind me if I forget. So item 9-2, uh, item PW34-21. And this is that report. Um, it's uh, from the Director of Public Works and Recreation, follow um, approved roster list for wind turbine tree replacement program. So number one, that report PW-19-2021 regarding Ross approved roster list for wind project tree replacement program dated September 20th, 2021 be received and that to that the following firms be approved to supply and install trees as part of this project. And they are EA Looney Services Inc. CSL Group Limited, Division Two Contracting Limited, and then Earthgen International Limited, and three, that council uh, authorizes staff to enter and execute purchase orders to the recommendation to the recommended firms up to a total upset limit of $624,000. Can I have a mover for that? I'll move, Cheryl. I'll, I'll second. Thank you, Councilor, uh, Councilor Ganan. Councillor Riley seconds that. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I, I would like to say something. <laughs> okay, okay, I would too. So go ahead, Mayor. Okay. Uh, uh, no, yeah. I was just I was just going to say uh, quickly um, that uh, this has been a long time in coming. Uh, it's, I, I know it's been a on uh, uh, Madam CAO's uh, whiteboard right from the very beginning, um, and um, I, I, I'm. I know that some members of the community are, you know, um, maybe maybe a little bit impatient uh, or, or maybe vexed that it's taken this long, but it has been quite a process and uh, there were a lot of implications, but I'm glad we're at this point now where we can finally get this work done. Um, and so I think that this is a, um, you know, a job well done to staff for getting us this uh you know we, we got a good amount of money and um, i let's get these trees in the ground so that's all i wanted to say thank you uh, mr chair no problem thank you uh councillor uh, ganan so my comment was similar having stuck with this idea for, since the last term of council as well um i just wanted to also thank staff for pursuing this and sticking with it and finally reaching this point where finally these trees will get planted I'm sure that we will all be happy to see that done, including the residents who have waited patiently or not so patiently. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Just speak out if you want to say something. Okay. Hearing none. Any opposed? Hearing none. I, we can consider that moved or carried. Thank you. Okay, we come to 9.3, and that's item PW35-21. And that's um, that report REC-10-2021 regarding Dennis Drive Playground request for proposal RFP authorization does dated September 20th, 21 be received and two, that council approves the RFP submission by Play Power in the total amount of $123,784.68 plus HST, and three, that a bylaw be passed to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into agreement with Power Play. Can I have a mover for that? So moved. I'm um, second it, Mr. Thank Chair. I heard, yep, we got that. So moved by the, the mayor and seconded by Councillor 
Riley. And I also have a question questions? or comment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go thank, ahead. Thank I'll you. let you. Uh... All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess through you to our director of public works, Sarah McBala, uh, I just wanted to say uh, I'm actually quite impressed with the amount I'm looking at the image right here and with the amount that we're actually getting for that price tag. I know it's a staggering price tag, you know, that's not a small amount of money, but uh, going through a similar process with one of the other boards I serve on uh, to get, we got maybe about half that for that, you know, uh, for that, for about that price range as well. And so I'm, I'm very impressed to see how much we're getting um, and that's gonna probably be very well received in, in ward one there. Um, but my question actually is, is there going to be any park benches or anything around to help support like, you know, um, parents or, you know, grandparents that are going to be there watching? Cause in this picture here, obviously we only see the actual playground system, uh, but we certainly don't see anything else that would be, you know, allowing people to also sit down as they sit and watch their kids. And if it's anything like an experience when you know, my wife or myself go and take our kids to the park, you know, we're very engaged there, but there's times where you just want to sit back and let them kind of just enjoy their independence there. So Again, I was just kind of curious if there was any plans yeah, to put a couple of park benches. Yeah, through the chair yeah. to Councillor Riley. Sorry, through the chair to Councillor Riley. Um, the, we, we budget for park benches separately than okay. the playground equipment. So we do carry uh, annual amount of money in our annual budgets for park benches. So we definitely will uh, uh, you know, be adding park uh, benches in, in this park. Excellent. And I'm assuming there'll be like a garbage can as well, like something else to ensure that waste isn't going on the ground, uh, you know, intentionally. That's, that's correct. Awesome. Okay. Oh, great. I think this is fantastic. So, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I think everybody will be looking forward to uh, that one coming up and being able to enjoy that. So, any opposed? Okay, hearing none, we move on to other business. 10. I don't see any other business. Um, is there anybody that has other business? It's usually covered in the first committee. Uh, so, but I Mr. still need Chair. to ask, is there any other? Sorry? Mr. Chair, yeah, I have a couple things. Yes. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Mayor. So um, uh, I have I have a few, few small things. First of all, thank you to uh, staff um, for the uh, eight kilometers of uh, tar and chip that was laid down on uh, fifth concession. Um, I drove it smooth, a, a very job well done. So I hope we um, um, you know continue to have that success. Um, it uh, uh, was uh, I don't know. I, I I'm I'm very proud of that, and I think this council should be very proud of that um, that uh, accomplishment. Um, that's you know service service increase. That, so I just wanted to get uh, on the record um, that. The other thing um, was, and, and I think we kind of missed out on this throughout the summer, but, um, and, and I've always known that we're having a band shell. Um, uh, and so I, that's what I'm speaking to, the band shell that's going up at the arena. Do we have um, like current renderings of what that's going to look like? Um, is there something that, that we have, or is there something like on, a, on, a, on an old file that we, that we have? Um, I, I'm just curious to know, um, uh, what it's going to look like. And I, I can't recall a current rendering of what that's going to look like and how it's going to be cited, those kinds of things. So maybe yeah, a question to uh, Madam CEO. Director, Madam CEO. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to answer I think, that. Yeah, I, was yeah, gonna I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you, Director uh, of, of uh, sorry. Go ahead, uh, uh, Mike DiPaolo. Yeah, through the chair to, to, to Mayor Bilsma, um, we awarded uh, that project, I believe it was an April committee meeting. And um, as part of that report, there, there was a, an attachment that had the rendering of it. That was a few okay. months back. Uh, but that was just a rendering of it. We, we actually have, uh, you know, con uh, design drawings, which make it, um, you know, more detailed drawings. Uh, so there is a, re a rendering in that uh previous report back in April. Um, I could send it out to council and, and committee members so that everyone could, you know, so that it's at the top of your uh, inbox and you could look at it once, once, once again. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, um, 
there there were some inquiries uh, about what what the digging was going on at, at the uh, at the site, and um, and so uh, you know people are are it seems to be positive um, a response to that, and and I think there should be. I think it's a it's a neat feature. The other and so the third thing that I wanted to do or ask is uh, just quickly um, quick question about the fire station uh, number two, um, and I know. Uh, Oh, I, I still see uh, the chief on, so I'm just wondering um, how, how that process is going and where we're at with that so that uh, when the digging starts there, then we can uh, answer those questions right away too. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, to uh, Mayor Billsmith, absolutely, I can give you an update. Um, so having discussions uh, with the architect and, and design, uh, we came across the fact that the cost of construction, as you can honestly believe, is absolutely through the roof. It's starting to level out a little bit. Um, but where we ran into issue, because we're doing a pre-engineered design, uh, structural steel is, uh, we won't get any structural steel till at least July of 2022. Wow. Um, so to, to move forward, uh, it was a decision of the committee and the architect to, uh, hold off putting the tender out for construction to late fall. So early November and get prices for, uh, in the first week of January back. So we see where we are as far as dollars and cents go. And we're still not going to get structural steel till July. So we decided that instead of putting foundation and floor down and then it sit for six months uh, through the winter, we decided to hold off and go in that direction. So that's where we're at. You're going to see the tender go out probably the first week of November. And I'll be giving you a report early January. Well, thank you okay. for that, and, and um, I um, I can't say that I'm surprised uh, and or pleased. Uh, obviously, you know the the cost of things going up. So that that's um, uh, thank you for the update, uh, Chief. No, no, nothing further, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. I I just thought I'd uh, um, update us a little bit on uh, the work in St. Anne's, and it's uh, maybe a question to uh, the Director of Public Works, but um, I've noticed. Uh, People with uh, vests on, taking pictures in St. Anne's and, and the uh, rehabilitation thing, the project there. Um, just thought maybe if we could just get a little update, that, is that moving forward? Is are we getting some of that stuff is being done and just maybe um, give us an update on, on, on the St. Anne's road there, if you're able. Yeah, through the chair, rest of the committee, <clears throat> I could do that. Um, yeah, we had uh, surveyors uh, on site doing some survey work to get ready for the uh, preliminary engineering. Um, some boreholes have been done to figure out the existing pavement structure condition uh, assessment on the uh, on the bridge has been done. Um, we're going to be uh, sending out uh, a notice of study commencement to the residents and and uh, the other properties in the within the study area so that we can uh, start the uh, public consultation. Uh, if committee remembers, uh, we're, we're doing the public consultation this year, which will kind of uh, determine the preferred road design and, and solution. And then uh, that'll wrap up uh, later on this year into the beginning of next year. And then in our 2022 budget, we'll set aside funds to start the detailed design for the construction project. So. Uh, that's where we're at now. So the, in the very near future, within the next uh, month, probably in October, the residents will be getting a notice of study commencement so that we can engage the residents and uh, gather some input, share all the data and come up with a, a preferred road design and solution so that we can move to the next step of detailed design in next year's budget. Hope that's helpful. Yeah, that's very helpful. So Thank you for that. And uh, I just also have one other question, just um, for regional road 69, I know it's an, it's a regional road. Um, they did the part from 20 to um, mountain road and did a beautiful job. The stretch from there to Victoria Avenue, just, I, I think we did have a, a 
you, you had a report a while back saying that was going to get done. Um, I just can't remember when I, I is, is that true or is, is that just the section they were talking about or are they going to redo from, from that, um, sorry, uh, Grimsby mountain road or Beansville mountain road, sorry, to Victoria. That's going to be, is that going to be done as well? Because I, I've been, people have been asking, it's, it's pretty rough there. And I, I, I've been telling people that it is being done, but I can't remember when. So I'll just get an update maybe to the public there, if yeah. you can. Yeah, sure. So that, that section of road um, from Mountain heading uh, east, uh, the region has that identified in their uh, capital budget forecast for a reconstruction. The work that they, that they just completed was just kind of a shave and pave, just some resurfacing work, which is, you know, stuff, you get that stuff done pretty quickly within a year or two but the region has plans to reconstruct the rest of that segment which which requires uh, a lot more uh, engineering work and, and design work and, and it's a bigger job and I believe they're trying to do it over uh, two years um, so it is in the region's forecast uh, I think the timing is probably uh, two to three years out based on the last meeting I had with the region uh, so that's that's when the region has it identified in their forecast. They're looking to reconstruct that road and they're continuing on with the design work and then they'll set aside funds in the next two to three years in their forecast to reconstruct that. And once again, it'll be over two, two uh, construction projects. And uh, that's about it. Yep. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Appreciate that. I know I, I kind of put you on the spot there, but you're, uh, you're on the ball and I uh, appreciate that. Um, Okay, any other uh, new business? If, if I don't, I can't see anybody else waving their hands, so speak out, but I, I hear none. So I think we can move on to I, uh, 11, new business. Any new business? That's where we are, right? And we'll move on to confidential matters. There are none. I believe it's safe to say we can adjourn this meeting at 8.03. Um. Right. Yeah. We good, Mike? Uh, Councillor Rayner. Um, Thank um, you, everyone. Yeah, it's just it's just that confidential is number twelve, and confidential in the yeah, past and all the years I've been around has always been done last, and it's still listed as last. But confidential lately has been first. Either change the order number from it, or we go back to the old way. But the way it is right there is wrong because we just had confidential today. And it was number one, it was number 12. I believe yeah. confidential is up to the discretion of the chair if there's an opportunity to bring it forward to be more efficient yeah. or to be more um, efficient if we're bringing in like legal advice and stuff like that. It's certainly a lot less. Yeah, I understand extenuating circumstances so like that. I, don't, I understand the procedural here, but you know, it's not uncommon to have it beforehand. I like to just be done earlier. So I requested confidential at the beginning, Councilor Rayner. Beautiful. It's fine. Good night, everyone. Uh, the, the meeting was adjourned a uh, couple minutes Thank ago. Thank you, everybody. But... Thank you, Councillor Rayner. Thank you, Councillor Riley, Councillor Broderick, Councillor everyone, Councillor Ganana, and staff. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. I can go to uh, my anniversary party. <laughs> <laughs>